and now underlining is Declan Mina, a counsellor for the Labour Party for Fibsburg, Cabra and Glasnevin. Declan, welcome to the programme. Hello, Darren. Thanks for inviting me. OK, Declan, a couple, a couple of days ago on board, Panada announced the ruling on what is going to happen to the redevelopment proposed for the Fibsburg Shopping Centre. But before we talk about the ruling, could you give our listeners on the FM some background to this story? Uh, so, I think everyone knows the Fibsburg Shopping Centre, and it's, I think it was quite divisive even when it was built. But I think it's kind of come to the stage now where everyone agrees, you know, it's an eyesore, it needs development. And a good few years ago, there was a Fibsburg local area plan that had a really detailed redevelopment of the shopping centre and of Daily Mount, you know, our city's you know main football stadium. And really, that would have involved demolishing and putting, you know, a nice town centre. And there were discussions as to what we could have there. There are varying proposals. That fell apart, unfortunately. And more recently, then, we had a proposal for student accommodation. And that uh, then didn't happen. And now we had this other development, which is quite unfortunate, which is co-living. OK, so the decision is for co-living. And you're, I believe, totally, you think this is a terrible idea, don't you? Absolutely. I think that, you know, we need to just think about what could be built there. And what we need to do is ban the unsustainable development. We need to, you know, definitely reduce the number of new hotels. We need to ban co-living so that the only option to build on these sites is decent houses that people can afford to live in. No one's going to call co-living home. You know, no one's going to set down roots in the community and come back to their co-living shoebox after 10 years. Um, what we need is homes. We need well-sized apartments, decent apartments that people want to live in, and some houses as well. OK, to quote from the Irish Times a couple of days ago, the developer MM Capital said yeah. that there was a huge demand for co-living in the area that is not being met. Yeah. What do you think about this claim, Declan? Um, well, I've spoken to the alleged co-living people, and it's it's not the case. I mean... A lot of people make the argument that this is where people from tech companies are going to um, want to live. Now, I've looked into this. First of all, people in tech companies have really big salaries so they can afford the extortionate rents in Dublin. Secondly, a lot of people in tech companies are covered by non-disclosure agreements. So actually, the only place they could do their work from home would be in these shoebox rooms. Um, So I think the idea that, you know, on board Planola, I think, is... I think it's one of the worst government bodies. I think people have very low confidence in them at this stage because what they're, they said that, you know, you can work from home in these. But in a lot of cases, you know, I work for a charity. I deal with confidential stuff in my day job. I couldn't work in a co-working space because of the level of confidential calls I could end up receiving. So I couldn't work from home there. And a lot of people are in the same situation. So we really need to think about this, you know, with with reality, with you know, because there's this real pressure to just build anything, you know, any space with, that you can, if you can fit a bed in it, it's a house, is this argument that's going on now. People are like, look, if we can put a bed in there and we can, someone is willing to pay money for it, that's demand. That's not demand. That's desperation. And uh-huh. the demand people have is for large apartments. The demand people have is to have a room for a guest to come over. Like, these are things that every other city can deliver and we can deliver them as well. So you're saying, I didn't see this in the media a couple of days ago, but you're saying yeah. the actual uh, accommodation itself in this, in the uh, in these co-living, the rooms are tiny, are they? Yeah? They're very small. Now, I don't have the exact figures, and unfortunately um, it is quite technical to try and pull that out. But, I mean, just mm-hmm. I'm speaking very generally in terms of co-living, you know, the minimum standards is quite small, and people are obviously going a bit above them, but they're not going enough above them. And, you know, having to get up in the morning or in the evening and come out and share cooking facilities with five, six, seven, eight people, that's not good enough. You know, Mm. we're talking about adults. Like, people can live with that in student accommodation because it's temporary and they can go home at the weekends or whatever. But, like, for people to be faced with the prospect of living like that long term, I don't think is fair. I don't think is reasonable. Okay, and this decision by and by Planana fell through the cracks, didn't it? Because I believe Minister for Housing, Dara Bryan, actually banned uh, co-living developments in Ireland uh, last year, didn't he? Yeah, he did, and he did it in a very incompetent way, in my opinion. Um, what he did was he said, I'm going to ban these, and then he left developers to run through and just, you know, um, 
ran in, and I know there's been some, now this one wasn't, but there were some that were presented like hand-drawn for these, uh, mm. you know, to rush and try and meet the deadline. Um, and obviously there's this strategic housing development process, which is a huge problem. It's causing absolute chaos across the city because it involves secret meetings with DCC officials and on board Panola, pre-consultation meetings, which are private, and there's no public interest in those. It's not like, you know, councillors can't be there, public can't be there. It's just the officials trying to get this through. There's one round of consultation and then people are left with the only option of taking really costly legal action. And, you know, when legal action is taken, a lot of these are overturned because they're so flimsy. So, I mean, I would, uh, and it, it's a horrible situation to leave people in. You know, with regular planning, there is a way of making an easier appeal. So I think we need real clarity on this. We need an end to the strategic housing development process. And what we need to do is accept that in other countries, local government is given powers and here we need to be given powers. We have a Department of Housing and Local Government that doesn't want to build housing and that doesn't want to empower local government, and that's a big problem. Okay. Declan, is there anything that can be done to overturn this decision, or is it just a matter of now we have to move on? Well, I have a real concern about this. You know, what happens for the people who live there? They're not... I don't think they're being given leases. I think we need clarity on that. What, who, what independent mechanism is there to vindicate their rights if there's a dispute? Um, I think that for the people who are forced, to, people are people don't want to live the, in these things. They've no option but to live in them because instead of building houses that people want, there's been you know they're having hotels and co-living being built. Um, there is an option to take a judicial review, which is to take a really expensive, risky legal case. And I think the level of anger about this, I think some people might do that. Unfortunately, it's taking on quite a lot of risk. It's not something, you know, I'm not in a position to do it myself. I can't afford it. Um, but I, th I think there is a possibility of that happening. And it's, it's a really shocking way to do business. You know, there should be an appeal process. And I think we just need to go back to proper planning with local authorities and not this mess of strategic housing development. Uh, on a totally different matter, I've been working with the Cabra Office of Dublin City Council and they have uh, dog poo bags available for shops. So if you're a local shop owner, and you'd like to give your customers some free dog poo bags, get in touch with me and we can get that arranged.